guys, let's maybe start taking a look. So I took x prime plus ct prime and I added it to x prime minus ct prime. Now x prime plus ct prime is e to the theta x plus ct and I've added that to e to the minus theta x minus ct and then I divided both sides by 2. Everyone happy with that? ct prime minus ct prime is 0 x prime plus x prime is 2x prime divided by 2 is just x prime is equal to now look at the x e to the theta plus e to the minus theta over 2 what is that? cosh theta e to the theta minus e to the minus theta over 2 so what do you guys say? I say cinch okay. usually when I say cinch you guys laugh but I know some of you say shine I'm going to say cinch okay. that's well look cinch ct okay now, did everyone get that? Good. Who got CT prime? Sinch theta. Times? X. X. Plus? Cosh theta. Cosh theta. CT. Great. So that's the relation between these two. Now, um, let's try to write this perhaps in a um, slightly more uh, familiar way. Um, good. Let's imagine that the fly is sleeping at uh, x is equal to naught. Okay? So let's study the point x is equal to naught. Study x is equal to naught, then the primed coordinates. So if we look at a point x is equal to naught, how, how fast is it moving in the unprimed coordinates? It's not moving because it's x is naught. That's some specific position. Okay. Now I'm going to see where is that point in the primed coordinates. And if that point is moving, what will it tell me? how the two frames are moving with respect to each other. Okay? So I'm looking at a point which is at rest in one of the frames, and by studying how it's moving, I'll find out how the second frame is moving. If x is naught, what does x prime equal to? Cinch. Ct. What does Ct prime equal to? Gosh, CT. So actually, if we take a look at these two, is everybody happy that I can write x prime is equal to tan theta times by t prime? Is everyone happy with that? Emil? Good. So what do we have? This just looks like x is equal to velocity times t. So what's the velocity of the primed coordinate system? Tanj h. Uh, you know what? Good. Yes. That was a test, guys. I'm disappointed. There should be a c sitting there. Very good. Now, can somebody tell me what does the tanj function look like? Do you guys want a hint? Okay, here's a, here's a hint. I'll, I'll do part of it for you. Okay, now you guys carry on. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
What does it look like, William? What are the asymptotes? <laughs> okay. William, you are trying to get me to write down the curve. <laughs> Let's write tanh theta. What is tanh equal to? Cosh? Cinch over cosh, right? And the cinch is e to the theta plus or oh, minus e to the minus theta over e to the theta plus e to the minus theta. What is this when theta is zero? Okay. So okay, wait, wait. Okay. That's great that you guys are offering answers, but now we have to decide. Is it naught, one, two, or one half? Okay. <laughs> this is one minus one, which is good. So when theta is naught, tan theta is zero. Good. When theta goes to infinity, what can you tell me about e to the minus theta? Goes to zero. So that term goes away, that go term goes away, we get e to the theta over e to the theta. So, one. And when theta goes to minus infinity? Good. William, what's the asymptote? <laughs> minus one. Okay, minus one over one, yes. I will simplify that to minus one. Good. So, when we study our velocity, okay, that we said our velocity v is equal to c tanh theta. Where does the velocity lie between? Minus c and c. So the two frames can't be related by an arbitrary velocity. The biggest velocity the two frames can be related by has to be less than the speed of light. And you can tend towards the speed of light, but you can never get to the speed of light. Okay? Now, so we have learned that tanh theta is, so, so V is equal to C tanh theta. Let's rewrite that in a slightly different way. So we've got V over C is tanh theta and V is the velocity of the primed frame. Okay? So V over C is tanh phi. X prime is equal to cosh theta times by X plus cinch theta times by CT and uh, ct prime is equal to cosh theta times by ct plus sinh theta o. Uh, that's right, times by x. Okay. And uh, what I would like you guys to do now, oh, we can also put y prime is y and z prime is z. What I want you guys to do now is rewrite cosh and sinh in terms of v and rewrite this whole expression just using v. How are you going to rewrite cosh and cinch? So we know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is 1. What's the equation for the hyperbolics? Cinch squared minus is it cos squared minus sine squared is equal to 1? Yes. Does everyone agree with that? Are you sure? <laughs> okay, I think that check it on a piece of paper. When you're sure of which one, 
That's the relation you start from. And then you should be able to get an equation expressing tanh in terms of cosh and sinh. Okay, guys, let's try that now. said it correctly. Okay, hey guys, are we all getting what I've written on the board for cosh and cinch? Okay, so you can now re express the Lorentz transformation completely in terms of these quantities. So if we do that, cosh, we've got the 1 over square root. For cinch, we've got an extra v over c, so we get x plus t over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared and from this equation uh, we've got c t prime at c t over the square root one minus v squared over c squared and then this I guess we can write as plus uh, v x over C. And if you have seen the Lorentz transformations before, that is probably the form in which you saw them. Okay? So can you guys see how did we get the Lorentz transformations? Just by requiring that a solution of Maxwell's equations goes into a solution of Maxwell's equations. So where did the Lorentz transformations come from? Where did special relativity come from? Electromagnetism. Electromagnetism was what taught us about the structure of space-time. Okay?
Okay, we have to stop now. You've got the Lorentz transformation, so you could in fact answer at this point any of the questions in the tutorials that you need to submit. But what we will do, when we start in the afternoon, we're going to talk a little bit about the physics of the Lorentz transformations, what they mean. Then we're going to rewrite electrodynamics in a relativistic notation. And once we've got electrodynamics in a relativistic notation, we will be able to talk about gauge theory. It's a small step to gauge theory from here. Yes, William? Uh, when we had a, a curve of the figure of the, I saw something like a 2C somewhere, where if I'm doing a measurement, my speed should not be more than 2C. How does that have to do with this uh, one to minus one? Yes, it does. So uh, what can happen is, you know, it, so, so we always have to determine what velocity we're measuring. And there are many things I can think of which are not physical. It's not the velocity of something that can be greater than C. So for example, what I, I might do is I might be sitting in my frame and I might want to know what is the relative velocity of that particle moving towards me and that particle moving towards me. And if that particle is moving this way with speed C, and that part with speed of light, and this part was moving that way with speed of light, if I calculate in my frame what's the relative velocity, I will get two times the speed of light. But don't let that worry you, because there's nothing moving with that velocity. Those are just two velocities that I decided to subtract in my frame of reference, and they're not the speed of anything physical. Okay? I can, I can give you even other examples where things move faster than C that are again not physical. So, so here's an example. Imagine I've got a torch, okay? And I'm shining the torch, and you watch the red spot on the back of the room, okay? The red spot at the back of the moon, room will move with some speed across the room. Do you agree? If the room is deeper, the spot moves even faster, right? If you make the room deep enough, the spot at the back of the room would move from one side to the other side faster than the speed of light. But the spot isn't something. It's just, you know, some uh, thing that appears when I shine my torch. So the fact that that's moving faster than the speed of light doesn't matter. So the correct statement to make is no information carrying signal can move faster than the speed of light. So there are other things that move faster than the speed of light, but they don't carry information. Okay? Any other questions? Okay, good. So, so we will return to that this afternoon. Um, I'm just wondering. Should I give you guys a joke? Yes. You want a joke? <laughs> okay. So, uh, see, as we get deeper into the course, you guys must understand, my jokes can't keep at such a high quality. Because <laughs> I don't know so many good jokes. But I, I've, I've got another one. So... Um, this one is again about a psychologist. It's the same psychologist that we heard in our previous joke, and he's still studying physicists and mathematicians. So he's learned a lot about them, but he would like to learn more. So he decides what he's going to do is, he's going to put them in a room in a situation that might be dangerous, and he's going to see how do they react. So the physicist goes to sleep on his bed, and while he's sleeping, the psychologist starts a little fire under the table. So at some point, the physicist smells this smoke, he opens his eyes, he sees there's a fire. He immediately jumps out of bed. He looks confused, he searches around the room. He sees a bucket of water. He looks at the fire, he thinks for a little bit, and then you see him go, he knows what to do. He picks up the bucket of water, he puts the fire out, and he walks out of his room. So the psychologist writes it all down. Then, the next night, the mathematician goes to sleep, while he's sleeping, so a fire starts. The mathematician smells the smoke. Again, he gets out of bed, he's confused. He sees the water, there's a bucket full of water there. You see him thinking about it. He's also happy, and then he runs out of the room. But the psychologist is amazed. So he says to the physicist, what did you do? So he said, I saw there was water there, I put the fire out. So then he said to the mathematician, what did you do? So he said, well, I saw there was this problem, there was a fire burning, so there was a problem to be solved. I saw there was a bucket of water. I could have used the bucket of water to put out the fire. At that point, I realized 
a solution exists. <laughs> and I like that. Okay, guys, that's it for now. See you this afternoon.